Hi, everyone. I'm excited to be here today to talk to you about some of the miracle stories that are happening right here in our own city, in our own state, every day. My name is Tony Kosha, and the title of our show is Tony's 50,000 Coincidence Miracles. Please note, uh, this show is not about religion, and we're not trying to change anyone's religion, and we're not trying to get you to join any religion. Uh, It's just about miracle stories. I don't know of any religion on the planet that doesn't talk about miracles. Uh, That's why religions begin, because they have something that's telling them there's really a God. But we're not going to get into that. We're going to just talk about miracles and leave the decisions about all that up to you. So we don't care what religion you are. Uh, We just want to talk about miracles. Uh, If you are an atheist, uh, I think you'll enjoy the program as well, although I can't guarantee you'll remain an atheist very long after you hear uh, many, many convincing stories, uh, coincidence kinds of stories about miracles. Uh, You can email me your own stories if you wish. Um, We'll try to use all we can on the show. I can't guarantee we will, depending on volume and time. But you're welcome to send your stories on to us, and we will mention them when we can. Uh, You can send them to the following email address. Um, uh, But please notice that if we do use your story, we won't mention your name. We'll keep you anonymous. And we suggest that in your story, when you send it to us, don't use your correct name. That way anyone listening will not be able to figure out that it was you that sent the story in. Uh, The email address you can send your stories to uh, is very easy to remember. It consists of two words and three numbers. The first word is Tony, spelled T-O-N-Y. And the second word is and, spelled A-N-D. And the numbers are 777. So once again, the name is Tony and 777 at AOL.com. Well, let us begin. This is week number 54, and our first coincidence miracle has to do with the inspiration I got from God. As I was working on my to-do list pile again, I asked God what to do, and he inspired me to send a message to Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, As you know, I have about 8,000 contacts there, and I do post things there pretty much every day. So the message for today was to post a something about a statement in a picture that said, why bother? That's supposed to get people's attention. Everybody's so busy. We're still in the the coronavirus currently, and uh, people are busy and hectic and stressed, and so why bother? And the message I was inspired to type uh, was from Jesus, and the message was, why bother? And it lists some things. You know, why bother to be kind and polite and gentle and patient. Why bother? And you, if you've listened to any of the talks over the last uh, few weeks, you know that I've been stressing that all of us, every single person on the planet, is supposed to be talking to God all day long and asking God what to do. And in my to-do list, I ask him what to do next and when to do it and what day to do things on. And the result of that is we see coincidence miracles all the time because we're asking him what to do, and God tells us. And and when you do what God tells you to do, you experience miracles all day long. So I went to send out this message on Facebook and LinkedIn, and I typed it up. And when I pushed post, um, before I pushed post, I was inspired to check and see how many keystrokes I had left. And once again, and this is about the sixth time now that this has happened, um, I found out that I had exactly got this message done in precisely the number of strokes allowed. If I had one more letter of the alphabet or one exclamation point more that got typed, I would have been over the limit. Uh, So that's a tremendous coincidence miracle because, you know, I'm asking God what to do. He's inspired me what words to type. You know, sometimes you type the word and instead of if, or you type the word maybe instead of could. And uh, the different strokes make make a big difference. And this, you know, was about, I think, something like 230 keystrokes, uh, something like that order. 
So to come out exactly and for the sixth time now, this is how you know you're doing God's will. You ask him what to do, you type what he says, and things like this happen, marvelous things. As soon as I experienced that coincidence miracle, I went to my to-do list again and asked Jesus what to do next. He said, go and check the washer and dryer. I had clothes. I was washing and drying some clothes. He told me to put them in a certain time. And uh, imagine, he told me to put them in a certain time. I just got finished typing Facebook, LinkedIn, and I asked him what to do next. He said, go check to see the status So I walk down the hallway toward the washer and dryer, and as soon as I get to the doorway of where the washer and dryer are, the alarm went off on the dryer saying it was time to check the load. Perfect timing, almost as I was opening the hatch on the dryer. So I'm sharing again with you these little tiny things. You know, he says, go check the load. He didn't have to do that. And I, he knew how many steps I was going to take. He knew how long it was going to take me to get to the dryer. He knew what time I would be reaching for the cover on the dryer. And as I'm reaching for the cover on the dryer, the alarm goes off. Now, you know, if this happened once or twice in your whole life, maybe you'd say, well, it's not a big deal. But I ask God what to do every day. And when he tells me what to do and these things happen after 50 years now, This has happened many, many times in 50 years, and I know it's him. And if you've been listening to the talks, you know he wakes me up before the alarm goes off every day. So uh, all these are clues that he's in our life, and he's helping us every step of the way. So I went back to my to-do list and asked what to do next, and I got inspired that I should make a shopping list and go get my shopping done. It was going to have to get done in the next day or so anyway. So I got ready, made my shopping list out, and traveled over to the uh, supermarket. And I pull in, and I noticed that the car parked right beside me. You know, there was one spot close to the door to enter the place. And I took the open spot, and the car parked next to me had a license plate number 555. And this also has happened in the last 50 years many, many times. And the number 555 means the presence of God. So, you know, I had a smile on my face as I walked into the supermarket. So I did my shopping, and um, when I got to the checkout counter, um, I, there was a long line there, so I was in a long line. And uh, I noticed a woman approaching the line, and she was passing me first before she went to the end of the line. I was closer to the registers, and uh, she was carrying... Uh, several items in her hand. She, apparently there were no carts or baskets when she came in, and uh, she had to carry all these things as she was shopping, and now she'd be in this long line. And I, as you know, I just finished writing uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, something that says, why bother? Why bother to be nice? Why bother to be kind? So I stopped her, and I said, are you ready to check out? She said, yes. And I said, well, why don't you cut in front of me because you're carrying those? And she was so ecstatic And she looked frantic and busy as she was walking. So I think she was probably trying to get these things done. And she had a lot of other things to do. She looked very busy. And she wasn't happy about the long line. So you could see a big smile on her face. So I bothered. I said, why don't you cut in front of me? And um, I I bothered. And the other people in back of me heard me. And when I turned around, they gave me a thumbs up. So now just bothering to please this one woman, I got two thumbs up from the people in back of me. And now they'll maybe bother a little bit. And I'm I'm not crediting myself here. I'm just pointing out that Jesus inspired me to do that. He, it was him in my soul that said, ask the lady if she wants to cut in front of you. So if you do what he says, you see, instead of calculating why bother with this, why bother with that, really, if we ask God what to do, he'll tell us what to bother with. And he knew this was going to bring this woman a lot of joy. Now, the next thing that happens is... Uh, Jesus inspired me since she was standing right there in front of me and she was very happy and we just got off to a friendly start. He suggested to me to hand her one of the cards about my website and the two books I wrote. So I handed her a card and I said, you know, uh, excuse me, but I wrote two books about, you know, being kind and trying to be nice and help other people. And so that's why I really asked you to cut in front of me. And I thought you might be interested. Well, she was so delighted. She said she's an avid reader. She loves to read. She's looking for a couple of new books now. 
And certainly with the coronavirus, people are shut in and they need to get good books. And, you know, our, our two books uh, encourage people to use, utilize the time we're alone by talking to God. So, so she was ecstatic about that, too. She asked me a couple more questions and she seemed to like the answers. Okay, so I'm just pointing out again, this whole day so far is ask God what to do. And I'm doing what he tells me and it's turning out to be a splendid, wonderful day. Our next coincidence miracle has to do with as I was driving home after grocery shopping, I remembered or I got inspired, I'm not sure which at the moment because it came to my mind, that I noticed uh, we were going to have a sunset at 4.44 p.m. That's three fours, and you know I make a big deal about numbers, right? So 4.44 p.m. would be sunset today, and I had noticed this when I checked the weather in the morning. And I, and I remembered in the morning, I thought, oh, this is great. I'm, I'm going to send a text to my three children and remind them because their mother, uh, as is cl- clear in my, in my f- first book, um, her, their mother passed away very miraculously and, and surrounded by miracles uh, a few years ago. And she passed away at 444 in the morning. And her passing was surrounded by miracles. So my three children know about all of that. And every time we see the number 444, we text each other. So my children are accustomed to me suggesting that, you know, we're going to have a sunrise or a sunset at 444 or 555. And I remind them what those numbers mean about God. And so I, I thought when I get home, I'll send a text to the three children and remind them that at sunset, Maybe we could say a prayer for their mom who's in heaven, and she can use our prayers in heaven for special graces that, you know, angels and saints can acquire in heaven when we offer our prayers to them. So uh, I thought, when I get home, I'll do that. So when I got home, as I was unloading unloading the groceries and putting them where they belong, and uh, I didn't get to my to-do list yet to do that, I got a text message from my oldest daughter, so I checked it. And lo and behold, my oldest daughter sent a text to me and the other two children, so she was doing what I was going to do. She said, I noticed that 4.44 p.m. uh, is when sunset is today, and I think Mom is sending us a clue from heaven uh, to have me notice that. So that was a great blessing for me because I was going to send a note to the three children. Three children, and my oldest child is something like 53 at the moment. Um... At, no, actually 57 at the moment. So uh, it was a glorious gift that she w- had the inspiration and, and noticed. And now I know why I never got around to doing that, because now I got the gift of seeing my daughter do it, which was another coincidence miracle. I could have sent it out as normally being the reminder person, but to have my daughter do that and the fact that I had noticed it earlier that day and hadn't gotten to do it yet was all a special blessing for me. So you see, again, why bother? These are the reasons why we bother, and we notice God at work. God knew I was going to get this uh, wonderful gift by my daughter sending the text, and I'm sure he inspired her at the right moment to get it done before I did. So it's another special grace. When God is your friend, he orchestrates all of these things to bring us joy all day long as our best friend. Well, recapping the message today, the first thing I shared with you was sending out the Facebook LinkedIn items and wound up with the exact number of keystrokes for that. And this was the sixth time that has happened to me recently. Next was Jesus inspired me to let the woman cut in front of me while we were shopping. And I I made a friend with her and I got two people giving me thumbs up behind me. We talked about the dryer buzzer sounding just as Jesus told me to check the dryer for if it was finished drying the clothes. And we talked about how uh, my daughter sent me the text for 444. Okay, let's remember to keep asking God what to do and do what he inspires us to do. And I'll talk to you all next week. (laughs) 